One of the things that I definitely want to talk about tonight is the riots that have been happening in the Capitol building this week with the Trump supporters. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because I realized that a lot of my students, even though they're on the computer for the entire day, they don't really get a chance to watch the news. And some of them don't really want to watch the news. So they're not aware of the things that are happening around the world, uh, the, the issues that are actually right outside their door that are affecting what's happening and what will happen when we do end this uh, quarantine. And I want to discuss a little bit more about what's actually happening. Now, I know that I am not an expert of politics. It's, um, it's something where I had to go and do my own research and what I encourage other people to go and do Every parent out there, if you don't know about something, that's absolutely fine. Go learn about it. Go ask Siri. Go look it up on Google. And you can't know everything about everything, but you can at least try to find out more about it so that we can inform our kids and so that our kids can make informed decisions for the future. So there are a few numbers that I want to go over with you. And those numbers are relating to the votes that take place within the U.S. Senate and the Congress. And this is one of the issues that they were having with the Capitol building. While the riots were taking place, they were doing the counting of the electoral votes. So every state has a certain amount of votes that... Um, that are counted for them based on the amount of people that live in that state. And this is based on the U.S. Census. And some of the Butterfly Scholars did videos, uh, we did commercial PSAs on the U.S. Census earlier last year so that we could inform people about the importance of it. But now that the census is ending, we're seeing how those electoral votes and how the information about how many people live in certain places affect things like a presidential election. So whereas you have smaller states or states that have less people getting less electoral votes, you have larger states with more people getting more electoral votes. And when a state votes for a certain candidate, all of those electoral votes go to that candidate. So in order for a presidential candidate to win the election, they need 270 votes to win. Joseph Biden officially, based on the certification, I have to read it now because you know my numbers, I'm an English teacher. So when it comes to numbers, I gotta write it down. So Joseph Biden had 306 electoral votes and Donald Trump received 232 electoral votes, which means by far Joseph Biden did win the election, the presidential election, and Kamala Harris, as his running mate for vice president, is now the chairperson of the Senate. And within the Senate, there are 100 seats. Usually there is a majority and a minority. So the majority is the amount of seats that go to one party. So let's say between the Democratic and the Republican parties. If there are 51 Democrats in Senate seats, then they are the majority and the, 50, the 49 are the minority for Republicans. What has happened, which is unprecedented, is that there is now an even split between Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. Senate. That means there are 50 Democrats and 50 Republican senators. When they make votes, if they end up with a tie, they need a tiebreaker. And Kamala Harris, as the VP and chairperson of the Senate, is now going to be that tie-breaking vote. So when we say that this is a, a position of power, these are people that are going to be making real changes and we have to stay informed about what's happening. Racism does not make sense to me at all. 
So when people are racist, like, towards me and towards my family, well, if it's towards, like, my nieces and nephews, then I get, like, upset. Like, I go off. But if it's towards me, then I'm okay with it. Like, I, if you want to say whatever you want to say, go ahead. Just know at the end of the day, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your breath, and you can't get that time back. Like, that's how I just, I see it. So I don't get really faced by mm-hmm. it. But mm-hmm. when it comes to, like, my nieces and nephews, I get more, like, kind of, protective. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'm ready to go off on anybody. Mm-hmm. Having a rich vocabulary and just knowing what those words or different words mean are actually an asset because you can get into different situations where you can be arguing with somebody or just having a conversation with somebody and they try to like trip you up with a word just to like Mm. say oh you don't know what i'm talking about but then you're like actually and then you just flip the word and just tell them definition said you used it wrong so (laughs) like it just yeah yeah, my sister does that a lot (laughs) um it just yeah we argue a lot oh my gosh (laughs) Um, I think just words, like, like Brianna said, like, there's such a bad reputation for, like, Bronx kids where we don't know anything and we're just not intelligent. But I really, how I see it is not a lot of people give the Bronx a chance. Like, they just have this bad reputation of them, this preconception, like, okay, they're not smart, this and they're, they're ghetto, they're thugs, all that stuff. The Bronx is actually not a bad place. It's just the things that has happened to the Bronx, which made it a bad place. Like the Bronx mm. um, fires. Um, mm. Also, the president saying he was going to clean up the Bronx, and then he didn't. Mm. I think it was okay. President... Man, I forgot his name. I think it's the one before Clinton. Re- research and come back. I know. I, I, we <laughs> were just learning about this, too. Is it Reagan? Like, yeah. Huh? Was it Reagan? Yeah. I knew it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my dad was talking about him the other day because he said he said something something oh like I know oh my goodness. He made a joke about being intelligent and like being really smart in Reaganomics and I was like, What does that even mean? He was like, Oh, it's because like kids in the eighties said that because they grew up on the street and like like Ronald Reagan was the president of, of that time and like drugs were really bad. And I find that so terrible to have that mm. attached to your name and attached to a generation mm. because it sucks. And it, it was primarily kids from New York City, like Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx, where kids were out on the street dealing drugs and like they called that Reaganomics. Like that just goes to show mm. how things can be linked to each other. Mm-hmm. I, I do it was President Reagan that said that. Of course it was. Of course. <laughs> Like that's wow. just terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. yeah he I just, didn't cut you off. I just had to say that. It's okay. Ridiculous. <laughs> President Reagan, he just didn't keep his promise, and the Bronx just didn't really have the needs, or the, not the needs, but the um, the resources to actually grow and become better. So mm-hmm. it's not really. The people's fault is the people who are actually supposed to help the Bronx get better. When people are angry and when people are, are, are in what we call like, a, what therapists call like a flight or fight state, what happens when you get anxious or something scary happens to you, a parts of your brain don't function the same way. And mm-hmm. so when people are angry, they're not also making the best decisions. Mm-hmm. Right, and then so keep that in mind. I know a lot of people are like, well, why are people reacting this way? And that doesn't make sense. And why are they doing certain things? And why are they burning down buildings? And why are they doing these things? And I think people have to remember when you're responding from rage, right? You're ma- you're not necessarily being strategic, mm-hmm. right? And and thinking things through and planning and things like that. You're just reacting um, within that space. Does that make sense? And no, do you it makes understand where that rage is coming from? Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. And, like, to add on to that, um, police officers aside, another way that people are, like, kind of reacting out of that rage is that, like, oh, if you don't, like, if you don't post about it or if you don't say anything about it, then... Then you're, you're, you're just you don't care. Bad. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're just as bad as the police officers that killed them. And I understand, like, you should definitely do your part to advocate where you can, like, whether that mm-hmm. be... Because I know that there's a number you can text, like, 55156. Right. Like, you can text Floyd to that. And there's, like, petitions you can sign. Like, something as simple as that, like, that's great. But I don't I think you need to 
prove yourself by posting things on Instagram 24 seven. So like they're, they're all like, I just see people on Instagram saying like, Oh, like we're watching you. And if you don't post anything, or if you don't say anything, then like clearly like your silence speaks yes, volumes. But like, but do, do you, you know what they know mean? It. But do you know what they, I, I think you're right. I think people should not be bullied into having a statement. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right about that. But again, I, I like to play devil's advocate and, and have you see another side of that. I think the reason, I think people say that specifically to people who post a lot. Mm. Right? If you're someone who doesn't really post anything really political anyway, I don't think people have an expectation of you. But I think if people tend to post every day mm-hmm. and then something like this comes up and you're silent, silent, people are then like, well, wait a minute. You know, this person is like on social media all day, every day. Like, do they not care about this? Mm-hmm. But you're right. No one should be bullied into having to prove what they feel or don't feel. It is a private thing. It's like, it's like, uh, when you have a political thing, a, a, politically how you stand, right? Whether you're Republican or Democrat, you don't have to prove to people what your stance is and what your belief systems are. It's same thing with religion, right? I don't have to prove to people that I believe mm-hmm. in God or whatever. These are my personal kind mm-hmm. of belief systems. But again, people are enraged, right? Mm-hmm. And so they just want to know that they're not alone. That's where that right. comes from, right? People mm-hmm. are coming from a place of, I don't want to say selfishness, but they're coming from a place of like wanting to just not just know that they're being heard. Yeah. Right. And so that's how they're viewing that. But if you don't say anything, you don't hear me. Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't say anything, you you know, which doesn't make it true. Mm -hmm. Right. But just to get an understanding. So I think when you, when you, that's why I say take a break from social media, but also when you're in social media, I want you also to be mindful of who you follow. Right, being mindful that the information that you're receiving is fairly, you know, it's always going to be biased, but is at least as honest as possible. And also, just like anything else, you take what fits for you and you throw away the rest. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. There are going to be some things that just doesn't align with you and align with your thinking, and that then that message is not for you. Mm-hmm. Does they, that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. Sense. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I definitely so, didn't think about it in the alone sense. Mm-hmm. That, right. Yeah, they make, I understand that completely. You're not alone. And, and I think everyone is feeling your, uh, your ire. Everyone's feeling this anger and this sense of powerlessness and not getting the response that they feel should be very evident and very logical and it's not forthcoming. So it, it makes you feel a certain way. Yeah. You know, so, and, and I know that we're all feeling like we need to do something and that's normal as well, but I want you to think about what's the next step beyond this. We've got to get through this certainly, but some other things that need to be happening simultaneously so that you are able to prepare and respond positively as you move forward. One of the things I'm I'm intimating is is just educating yourself about the history of why things are the way they are. You are the future and you are going to decide who is going to be the, the presidents in the next cycle. Not necessarily right now, but certainly in the, in the near future. So you need to be learning. What does that mean? What do I need to do in terms of being a good citizen? How do I decide who I'm going to vote on? What are the interim elections all about? Oh, I was about to say that because yeah, that is honest with you. The president, the president isn't. You know, we will like oh, the president, the president, the president is not the end all be all, right? We need to be worrying about our mayors. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our the judges, our, our judges, our governors, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to be in spaces where we can offer opinions. You know, mm-hmm. I, I was saying this to a little, my, one of my nieces earlier today, and I was saying, you know, we, we need more politicians. We need more advocates. We need, mm-hmm. we need more judges. We need more lawyers. We need more, you know, people in the spaces that can mm-hmm. say, you know, my vote counts. Excellent. Right. Uh, we need to know who our politicians are in our neighborhoods because mm-hmm. those are the ones who really affect the education system. It's not the president, right? Yeah. Um, but, but we have to learn that. And unfortunately, guess what? You learn that in one class in American history, I think, mm-hmm. for like, and that's it. So a yeah. lot of, a lot of, what, let me speak for myself, 
the most intelligent people that I know are self-read or self-taught, right? Mm. It, I mean, I think the degrees are important. Now, n- now, this is my opinion. This is not my therapy talking. This is my. <laughs> this is Naka's opinion. Naka's opinion is that degrees are important because you need them to get from point A to point B, right? Mm-hmm. These positions require them, and so you need them. However, they're not an indicator of intelligence. That's my opinion, right? I know a lot of people with a lot of titles with no common sense, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think what really makes someone educated is that need and that want to learn on your own, Mm -hmm. to look things up, to read, to be curious, Mm -hmm. to ask questions, and not to take things at face value, Mm -hmm. right? That's what makes somebody really intelligent, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, I question everything. Mm -hmm. Google is my best friend, you know? (laughs) I I watch TV shows and things come up, and I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And I pause it and I Google it. Oh, <laughs> did that really happen in history? Good. I don't know, you know? Good. Because you have to question things. Or because people will tell you anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and when people mm-hmm. tell you anything, they control the narrative. It's, right? a, it's a pattern and it's a, it's a kind of occurrence that's rooted deep in our, our American way of life, for lack of a better terminology. And the more you read, like Linkneka is saying, the more you know what that history is, better you can fortify yourself to make good decisions about how to deal with it. It has to be dealt with yeah. because it's systemic. It is in every facet of our being and our daily living. And the fact that you feel it so viscerally. It's in your body. It's a testament to the, the importance of it and that something needs to be done. You are the ones that will make this change. Because you have that, you're young, you've got that strength, you've got that stamina. Hopefully we can afford to. brain. (laughs) Okay. But you're all intelligent and creative. And we can be the support for you to move forward and do what needs to be done. And there definitely is, there are things that need to be done. So you need to be angry, (laughs) be angry, be creative, and be committed to do something and be the answer to this problem because it's a problem you know what i would i would push you guys to do when you have free time i know school is a lot right now but i would push you in these moments when you're watching the news and in these moments when you just get all this information whatever question that you have Mm -hmm. in your mind google it why is this happening what does it mean by this what what Mm -hmm. you know for example, uh, the, the president um, made, a, made a, a comment today that was crazy. And anyway, Twitter responded, and Twitter took down his comment, right? And Twitter said this comment is, is invoking violence and of this historical content behind it, right? And in my mind, I'm thinking this president is just saying whatever he wants to say. And I'm like, well, what's the historical content behind it? So then I Googled it, right? And he repeated something that was said in 1969 when, when you know, when um, Martin Luther King was around. And, you know, it, and so you just have to look things up, right? Like, correct. Just, just read things and question it. Like, just don't right. take things, you know, so that yes. I now I have a, un, a better understanding that it was deeper than just this sentence, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that, right? No one knows everything, right? But just that's what I mean. Any question that comes up, I ask. Question, you know? Mm-hmm. And just like in school, they charge you with using primary sources to respond to different questions that where are your primary sources what would you consider to be a primary source google okay is certainly a reference for you but what are some other sources you could go to to get answers to some of your questions your parents your individuals who have lived through this my grandparents and great grand they were slaves. We are re- removed generationally not that far from what slavery was. I remember picking cotton, okay? I spent my summers in Alabama. I had a large family and we were poor, but we didn't think of ourselves as poor because we had a lot of love. And that is what we have to Remember, love is going to conquer all this. We love ourselves, we love our families, we love our people. And we love what is right. And when you're grounded in what is right. Morally right. Morally right. 
you will always be successful. Always. Because the right will overcome all that other negativity. But you've got to get your education piece in there too. You can't be focusing out there blindly. You got to know what you're talking about. You got to go and read the history. You've got to talk to some people who have lived through it. Share your ideas, your opinions, and come up with ways to proceed in a positive way that are going to impact in a positive way for everybody. You all are so powerful, you don't even realize how powerful you are. And I'm glad you smile because <laughs> so I know I hit a chord down in there somewhere. Ashe. Diana. <laughs> 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 yeah, just being social aware is a good thing. Like being aware of social happening is a good thing. Like knowing what's going on around you, knowing, you know, what society is doing. Is yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is your future. Like mm -hmm. you guys were saying, at the end of the day, you guys are the one going to be the ones who are steering the wheel. And so it starts now, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm going to be voting, I guess, in two years or mm -hmm. three years. But yeah, it's something that is coming up and mm -hmm. something I should be aware of. But then again, I also look at it the other way where it's just so much and it can be overwhelming mm -hmm. and that it's, it's crazy, you know? And I don't know. I prefer, I don't know, sometimes I just prefer not to be stressed. And, you know, sometimes it's like ignorance is bliss, you know? So there's all these sayings and there's all these things that combat each other, but I, I don't have social media. So that's like something, it's not even something that I look to. Like I didn't have it because of my age. I was like, oh, I'm too, too young for social media. So I was like planning on getting all these. I don't have Instagram, I don't have Twitter. I barely well, honey, you know what, but what's a good, I think I want to just speak to what you just said. I think there's, there's two good parts. I think there is a safety in not having social media because you're not inundated, right? You're not mm -hmm. engulfed in the news and mm -hmm. you don't need social media to watch the news, but you do need to watch the news, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. even if you decide to say, I'm going to only watch 30 minutes and I don't mm -hmm. know everything on the hour, every minute, like everybody else, that's mm -hmm. not necessary to be quite honest, but just to be informed, right? Like when I speak to my siblings, I say to them all the time, like, slavery can come back and you wouldn't know so it's knocking on your door you know like you need mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. what's happening you don't need to be engulfed and you don't need to, mm -hmm. i do think social media allows people to know everything on the minute on the hour and, and that's mm -hmm. not necessary yeah. you're absolutely right it's not um but i do think it's important to at least check in once a day mm -hmm. even if it's just 30 minutes to just say like what's happening around me mm -hmm. you know i know just yeah. enough to understand where I, how i can remain safe I know just enough to understand like what laws are going on, what policies mm -hmm. are changing, and then I step away, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I think you're right. You don't need to, to be engulfed in it in the way that social media kind of really, I mean, it's, it's so much information, right? It's and so it's much paralyzing sometimes. And it is paralyzing. And I think you're smart in saying, I don't need that. And you're right, you mm -hmm. don't need that. But mm -hmm. I do think you need to be a bit informed. Can I add on to that? Okay. Yes. So I'm like Gianna, I don't have social media either, but I download news apps on my phone so I get notifications right. every time like a new article comes out. So that's how mm -hmm. I found out about a lot of this. Mm. So because I'm the same way, like I I feel like what's the point of having social media? I know that there's benefits to it, but most of the time mm -hmm. it's like the stuff that I can get from social media when it comes to news. I'm also getting mm -hmm. back to like the actual news site and mm -hmm. also like I'm not going to use it for like the recreational purposes, so I just choose not to have it. So in order to stay informed about what's going on, I just download news apps on my phone. Wonderful. Wonderful. What do you think is the power of knowing, though? All of you. What is the power of knowing, being aware of what's happening? Is that important or not? I feel like it is because then you make a difference. Like what happened to Amon Aubrey, where he was just like this innocent jogger who was killed. And mm -hmm. now like there's going to be a race called, I think it's called Run with the Mod, where people are actually like running in memory of him. And I feel mm -hmm. like that would have never happened if it wasn't for social media. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't know what's that. going on, you can't respond to it. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say something similar where I feel like knowing is change because 
um, it, it allows for change, I would say that, because if you're not aware of these things, you wouldn't be able to, what would you change, you know? You and like you were saying, this is our future. So if I go in this not knowing anything about anything, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be informed. Mm -hmm. And so just having the information is a step. Is a step. Taking the right Absolutely. action. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, that's what I was gonna say about that. You remember when slavery ended? 1863. Mm -hmm. There were people that didn't know slavery was over until two years later. Slaves didn't know slavery was over. They yeah. found out two years later. That's when we celebrate Juneteenth, when those particular slaves became aware that slavery had been over for two years and they were still functioning under the system. So knowledge is power. They didn't have computers and all of that. But the, the, the reference here is that knowledge and information is powerful. And you have to make sure that you know what's happening around you so you can make informed decisions and prepare and move forward and decide to take action and with whom you're going to take the action and for whom you're going to take the action because it's in your hands. You have to do it, not somebody else. You be the activator. The fact that you're feeling so strongly about this should be an indication to you that there's something you need to do. So I'm charging each of you to think about what is that something? They're telling people to do absentee ballots and a lot of people don't know anything about it because it's not on the news because the news is just all about COVID and it's not on social media because now social media is all about the anger and the rage. So those things that are on the news in a way become a distraction from the power that you actually have to make those changes. Mm -hmm. And yep. the last time that I went to go vote, I saw all of these names. I didn't even know who they were. So mm -hmm. that's something where I had to go and for myself. And on the U.S. voter registration site, you type in your address and they tell you, this is your assembly person. This is your Congress person. And then you kind of find out more about those people and what they're doing for your community. That's how you have power to find that information and not have the distractions keep you from the knowledge. Thank you. Do you guys know who your Congresswoman is? Mm. I feel like it's AOC. It is AOC. I... It okay. is. It is. Okay. It is AOC. She's in the Bronx and she's a queen. She's mine too. Okay. Go ahead. So <laughs> I, I, that is something that's real, something that's doable getting that information and getting that voter information out to your parents and your family and encouraging them. So even in the midst of this, this crisis, multiple crises, in fact, not to lose fa uh, focus and awareness that this election is going forward. And what's the importance of this election? Who is going to be the recipient of this particular vote? Right. Nobody's think thinking about that. Maybe that's our charge. Maybe that's your charge to go out and make that happen. Hey, right. family. Hey, community. This is happening. This is what you need to do. These are the people. These are their platforms. How do you feel about it? This is your voting site because some people don't even know where to go to vote. This needs to be a lot of learning uh, that needs mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. And I think the more information people have, you're right to speak to people becoming more allies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think there needs to be a time before that where people have to come to terms that there's privilege with whiteness, right? And I think mm -hmm. when you have people that just say, well, I don't that's see color, or that there's no denying, that's not then honest. that's problematic, right? Because we have to see difference. We are different. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. Thank God we're different, right? Like we all bring our own flavor to things. Mm -hmm. And so even in saying those things is, is implicit bias. Even saying those things is kind of denying that something is problematic. And that's problematic, right? And I want to hear from you. What did you notice? What do you think? What do you wonder? Um, I noticed that the COVID situation is getting worse. Good observation. Thank you, Brian. Anyone else? Um, I, 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 I noticed that, like, people 
um, they getting complaints and people like didn't really like have any like opportunity to like they just wanted like to do stuff like that like say like um like, like us he can't really he can't really like go out there and try to stop the run but when we try to get older we can probably stop the run and try to recover try to just make everything that right and also that the thing that's funny is why do they just let trump um um jump technically i forgot what it's called um things um people um break glass the glass but you don't let the um black people do that that's confusing you know that's a a very good um observation that you made uh when we talk about the different protests that are happening in the news most of those protests have been black lives matter protests and they've been in response to the killings of african americans in different communities the police brutality and most of the time it's um usually a caucasian or white officer that is killing or hurting a person of color and for you to say that you notice in the video that the people that are there are white why didn't they do the same thing that they did to the black people i don't know and um that's something that everyone around the country is really discussing it's it's a double standard it seems that you know if the black people get together and have a protest they're you know hosed down or you know arrested and if these people that were supporters came in with weapons with tear gas and nothing happens to them all of a sudden they just disappear and now the the news says that the police are looking for them but if they were black they wouldn't have to be looking for them they'd probably already be dead because the police wouldn't have let them get very far so it's um i see you francie yeah that is that's unbelievable Francie, you could say. Really, Go ahead, Brian. Oh, but something that I really hate about this is that only one person died in during that. But when Black Lives Matter protests, a lot of people died. You're right. And Francie said in the chat that we're going back in time to when blacks and whites were separated, when the blacks were even more oppressed. And we learn about this stuff in, in school. We learn about the civil rights movement. We have Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday coming up soon. And we have Black History Month coming up next month. But it seems like we're celebrating something that we still don't even have yet, really. Like, do we really have those civil rights if we have to fight in order to, to get what we deserve and we get punished? when we fight for those things. Um, if you, look at this side, you guys are really on point. And then, <laughs> Francie says we need Martin Luther King Jr. We're gonna bring him back from the grave. <laughs> Let's hear from a few more people. How about Shamel, Juliet, Eric, I'm glad you made it. We're having a discussion about the riots that happened in DC where the Trump supporters invaded the Capitol building. And we just showed a video about it, so everybody's giving their reactions. When you're talking about the votes, Randy mentioned um, how the votes were moved from one to the other. This was the the reason why the Senate was meeting, why Congress was, everybody was in the building trying to make sure that these votes were counted properly. And while they were making sure that the votes counted, this is when the riots were happening. So all of this stuff is happening at the same time. And they went back actually last night to finish counting the votes. And when I woke up this morning, I got a, a notice on my phone that said 5 a.m. Joe Biden is officially certified as the, the next president elect. So they went through all the votes. They, they confirmed that everything was accurate and Joseph Biden is the accurate 
president-elect. Like, he's going to be president, and Trump has to transition out. He has to get out of the White House by January 20th. So we still have a few more days to see exactly what Trump is going to do because he's still in the White House right now. Um, but this is something that you need to be paying attention to. You need to be looking it up on on the computer. You need to be checking on, on Google, search it up. Don't just rely on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. You actually have to go and research, look up CNN, look up um, the New York Times, Daily News, uh, PBS, like the channels that are trying to give you all of the information so that you're informed. And your parents need to know what's happening because this is not over. Next year, there are going to be even more elections. It's not a presidential election, but there are elections every year for a different group of people. And those people influence what happens with the president. So we need to make sure that we don't allow another circumstance like this to happen again. You have to be informed and aware, your parents have to be informed and aware, and you have to watch the news. All right, guys, I know that only one or two of you did, but now that I've shown this to you, you gotta get you gotta get with that, right? I see Brian's raising his hand. Go ahead, Brian. You wanna know something that I'm gonna I'm gonna predict something. These same people that are doing that are doing this right now are gonna be doing the same thing when um when Biden's out of office. Mm. So you're predicting you're looking four years in the future. We have four years to try to keep that from happening and to come up with a, a better option. Because remember, Joe Biden can run for another term. So that means he would be in for eight years. But we have to make sure that we're doing what we can to stay informed so that this riot doesn't happen again in four years. Thank you, Brian, for that. Randy, you wanted to say something else? Uh, no, I forgot to put my hand down. Okay, no problem, babe. I see in the chat, Hermione wants Obama back. Absolutely. I wish they could extend the term limits for, for Barack Obama. Hermione, you want to talk on that? He was a good president. He was, and he's still alive. I had a feeling that most of you have not been watching the news and have not been paying attention to what's going on. So now that you see what's happening, do you have any any feedback, any wonderings, any noticings about what you saw? Um, I would like to go first. Um, I watch the news a lot with my mom because I find it interesting because I never know what could happen in my area. But I've been seeing this like a lot lately, and I don't really like what was happening because those are all white people, and white people have most privilege in this world, and they they don't really get like harmed as much as we do. Um, and if it was like us being there and black people, we would have all got shot because of the color of our skin. There were a lot of people there that were white, were Caucasian. And I, in the video, I only saw one black face and that was one of the National Guard people. So um, it does seem like it's a double standard and that you know, the law enforcement was a lot more lenient on the white rioters than they would have been on any Black Lives Matters protesters. If you want to learn more about it, I would really urge you to go online, search it up, watch the news, uh, go to PBS, uh, ABC, watch CNN, channels that are going to give you um, both sides, both perspectives of the event and not just be biased. A lot of you haven't even um, noticed that there's no mention about COVID in the past two days, but the, the infection rates have actually gone up, I think three times what they were before. 
So there's a lot more people that are now sick with COVID. I have um, my grandmother. She's in a, um, a nursing home in North Carolina. Their whole nursing home got COVID. Uh, my, my cousin in Alabama is quarantined with her whole family. And it's, it's really getting bad around the world. She's in um, Dothan, Alabama. And um, we're inside and all we see is the stuff that, that we look at on the phone. So if all we look at is TikTok, that's all we're gonna know. If all we do is play video games, then that's all we're gonna know. And we have to make sure that we're doing that research, that we're being aware so we know what's gonna happen. We have to make sure that we're not getting distracted by the things that are happening in the media. And we have to make sure that we're continuing to stay healthy and safe. Because in the past few days, with all of the, the hoopla that we've been hearing about what happened with the Capitol building riots, we haven't really heard about anything with COVID-19. And it's been affecting so many people around us. I don't know anyone that has not been affected or has not lost someone or had someone ill or sick from the COVID-19 virus. And it's something that we still have to keep in our minds. We have to stay vigilant. We have to keep washing our hands. We have to keep wearing the masks. We have to keep listening to the news and finding out what's going on with these vaccines and with any side effects to make sure that we're not inoculating ourselves with poison before we um, actually know what those side effects are going to be. We need to make sure that we're staying in communication with each other because we are so disconnected and being in the house and everybody not being able to get out there and you know hug somebody, you don't even realize how, how powerful a hug can be or just sitting and talking to someone and how, how comforting it can be to just be around people. So when we're in this state where we can't really be around the people that we'd like to be, we need to be even more vigilant and more active and use this online platform to express our ideas, connect with each other. So I hope that I see many of you on Metamorphosis Mondays where we will have our talent shows starting in February. Our theme is going to be, of course, Black History Month. And I'm also going to be releasing videos on both of my YouTube channels, which are Butterfly Scholars and Chrysalis Camera on Metamorphosis Mondays so that we can have more information going out. So the Butterfly Scholars channel on YouTube is geared more toward students and youth. It stars my own children, Ryan, Jasmine, and El Shango, and all of the different activities that they've been doing as they've been growing up. And the Chrysalis Camera channel has been what I've been working on with my own poetry, singing, photography, as a model for my students for what they can do and how they can put their stuff out there. Hey, Sadiq, I see you. Thank you for joining us. I love you too. And you made it just in time. We're about to end. I just, I wanna thank everyone that that is seeing this, whether you're here now or you watch back in the replay. I'm hoping to see you on Metamorphosis Mondays at 7 p.m. starting in February. And we do have a sign up right now. So if you can DM me for Instagram or you can email me at chrysaliscamera at gmail.com. That's C-H-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S. Camera at gmail.com and continue to educate, motivate, and elevate the youth of today and the leaders of tomorrow. Bye guys.